Welcome back to Arcade. Um, in part one of this series, we went through the making your first Phaser 3 game, uh, the first three parts, and we've converted it to TypeScript. Now, in this video, we're going to keep going, and we're going to start here in to make the platforms um, usable. So you remember we left off here, we have our platform set up. So now let's go back to the official tutorial and see what we've got. I was going to explain to you the difference between static and dynamic uh, bodies. So a static physics group will just produce you static bodies that don't move. And a dynamic body is a body that will be affected by physics and move. So static bodies will interact with dynamic bodies, but just not move. So like grounds or walls or things that are supposed to stay in one spot. So it, you can read this for a more thorough, thorough explanation and of what it's actually doing. So that was mostly explanation. Now we're going to go to the next part here and create our player. So ready, player one. Great book. Haven't seen the movie. Uh, so here we go. We're going to make our player. So as you can see here, player is probably a global, um, but since we're using TypeScript, we are not going to do that. We're going to put it in our class. So go here, private player. It'll be a sprite, a physics sprite. So phaser.physics.arcade.sprite. And we're going to say it could be undefined. So now let's, after all this ground, we're going to go this.player, this.physics.add.sprite. 100, 450, and we're using dude, not platform player. Okay, we'll just follow along here and player dot set player dot set bounce zero point two, and we're gonna do player dot set collide world bound. So what this does is um, it'll basically box the player within the game uh, screen bounds here. So you can't walk off to the left or the right or the top or the bottom. It's a quick way of just uh, setting world bounds effectively. Now let's do these animations. This dot anims dot create. So key. We're gonna call this left, so this is gonna be the, I believe this is the walk left. Yeah, frames, this.anims.generate frame, frame numbers. Dude, start, zero, end, three. We'll give it a frame rate, just 10 and a repeat which is minus one for infinity, I believe. Does it say that? No. But if you check the phaser docs, you should see. So this anims create config and repeat, repeat integer minus one for infinity. So basically it loops forever, which is what we want for a walk animation. So let's do this is turn. That's right. Okay. So let's do basically the same stuff here. Dot create. Now in phaser, if you make a animation here in this scene, it is actually available in all scenes. So that's just how that system works. The anim, the animations are available everywhere after you've made them. Now I'm pretty sure at least. Could be wrong, check the docs. I could be thinking of something else. Um, okay, let's see, so there's that. Frame rate 20. Let me just confirm that I'm not lying to you. Anims. Right, so the animation is managed by the Global Animation Manager. Blah, blah, blah. Unlike plugins, it is owned by the game instance, it's not the same. See, I didn't lie. All right, so now we're gonna do, we did left, we, we, we did turn, now we're gonna do right. 
dot create. So now basically we're just getting these animations from that dude sprite sheet that we looked at in the last video. And uh, you can see we're doing frame numbers here. So generate frame numbers. And if you remember, I had uh, noted that there was some left walk and then right walk and then idle in the, in, idle in the middle. So five, just to finish this up here, eight. And then the frame rate 10 and then repeat just like above minus one. So you see here, start three, uh, start zero and three. We just look at this, say, we look at this dude.png. So zero, one, two, three. So this is the walk. And then, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is right. And then you see turn is frame four. So zero, one, two, three, four. So that's how that works, or that's how that maps to the dude.png spreadsheet. Physics, right? So this tutorial is going to explain some of these things in a bit more detail for you. Although I will mention that since we're doing this that physics that add that sprite, it's adding a physics sprite versus a non-physics sprite. So you can always do this dot add dot sprite. This dot add dot sprite, for example, gives you a non-physics sprite, just a sprite to put on put in the scene. But since we have a character, we're going to use our case physics. We're going to make a physics sprite. Phaser just makes this easy for you or for us to use uh, in like one call. Physics dot add dot sprite does it all for us explains the animations. If you need a more in-depth explanation of how that works, um, you should definitely check out this explanation. Now let's go next. Okay, so now we're gonna start moving our player around. Okay. So we're using arcade physics in this example and in this tutorial, but there is other ones you can use, Matter.js, Impact Physics, if you have an Impact JS, uh, Impact JS license. So let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just run it. It should actually has to be built. And there's our player, and it fell to the ground. Uh, so we see it did not collide with the ground. So we need to specify a collision between, or a, yeah, a, a, a collision collider between the player and the ground. And we do that like this, this stuff is that add dot collider and you pass it in the two things that it should collide with. So in this case, we can pass in the group of grounds, the static group. So this dot physics dot add dot collider. So we're going to do this dot player, and this dot platform group platforms. We want the player and the platforms to collide with each other. And there you go. Now it works. Okay, so that is that. Let's keep going. Okay, we're gonna add some player controls here with the keyboard. And so Phaser has this nice way of getting all your standard keyboard controls, the up, down, left, right arrow keys, and I think space and maybe something else. So again here in TypeScript, we're gonna create a class variable or a class property, cursors. So phaser dot input keyboard cursor keys. No, phaser dot just I don't always remember. Let's just set it. Where is it? Uh, we'll just set it here. So this dot input dot keyboard dot create cursor keys. So let's do some IntelliSense to help us out. It is fate that types that input. Okay. Phaser dot types dot input dot keyboard dot cursor keys. Now let's set that. So this dot cursors. There we are. So now the update loop. So this dot cursors dot left dot is down. So you see, uh, BS Code just automatically used optional chaining here with these question marks because it is not because we were telling TypeScript that cursors may be undefined and it may be undefined if something happens uh, it creates doesn't get called for some reason or 
you early exit here and cursor is not set, uh, cursors could be undefined. Optional chaining is just a more concise way of instead doing if this dot cursors return, don't do anything, then you won't need it. For example, this will be fine. It is not. Oh no, if not cursors return. Right, so that will be fine. So this may this may be preferred for you if you don't want to see all these question marks out everywhere, but um, the, the alternative here without this is something that I think is even worse is um, this is the general pattern so now you have a lot more code for no reason so we'll leave this early out uh, so we only have one question mark in here but you can just use optional chaining all right so this dot player dot set velocity x following along with this tutorial what am I doing minus 160 and then this dot player dot anums anums Play. So we're going to play the left animation that we set prior. Ignore if playing true, so that we don't restart it. Else if this dot cursors dot is right dot right dot is down. Player dot set velocity x 160. Player <clears throat> dot anims dot play right. Again, true so we don't restart else player dot set velocity x is zero if we're not pressing right or left and then player dot anims dot play turn and there's a jump at the end here if the this dot cursors dot up is down and player this dot player dot body dot touching dot down. So this touching uh, will will tell you if the player's physics box is touching another physics box uh, on the down, like below it, or the left, right, or top. So those are the other options here. Like you can um, you can see there's dot down, left, or no, none, touching nobody, right or up. So we're using down. And then when that happens, we're gonna set velocity y to minus 330. So the physics um, grid system or uh, x, y coordinate system is zero, zero is up here in the top left, and then increase x, increase y. All right, so there's that, now let's move. And there we go, I'm going right, going left, jumping, Look at that in relatively few lines of code and very readable code. Phaser lets you create a game very quickly. And this is how you set it up in TypeScript. Now we have a few more parts left from the official tutorial. Do come back for the next part where we tackle the last three parts from the Phaser, uh, the official Phaser making your first Phaser 3 game tutorial, but in TypeScript.